First of all, you see stars in the daytime. And the other thing that's unusual about the stars is they don't twinkle. Now, why is that? Well, I mean, sun doesn't twinkle, does it? No, of course not. I mean, um, the sun's there all the time. So are the other stars. It's just that from the Earth, the stars look so small that the light waves, as they come to us, are disturbed by the atmosphere. And that causes the stars to twinkle. Whilst, in, whilst from in Mark space, Cameron. This is from Mark Cameron. Whilst in space, have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, because yeah, you time. can see. Yeah. Because yeah. you can see the stars. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah, the stars. Yeah. It's it's not a black a cool void. Thing. I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of little polka dots. There's all the there's all the stars there, and the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. Yeah, you can, and there's more than stars. You can see planets. You can right. see moons. You you see the ga the gas. Uh, Magellan clouds of yeah, the Milky yeah, Way galaxy. Yeah, yeah, you see Magellanic clouds. Magellanic, see, I, was, yeah. I just wanted the Magellan clouds. Well, there's a large one and a small one, right? Yeah. And, and then you can see uh, the zodiacal lights. Whoa. Uh, those those are amazing, right before The lights sunrise. of the zodiac? The lights of the zodiac, the z zodiacal Whoa. lights, okay? You can see those. Which are and what? Then you explain can see those the to upper. us. Oh, well, it's, I mean, I know what they are, but explain it to... Explain it to the audience. To the, uh, well, to the it's audience. this big, it's this vertical so, column of fuzzy glow that uh -huh. comes up perpendicular to the horizon shortly before the sunrise. Every and, time? No, no we, it, it depends on the viewing angle and such. Right. Not every time, but if the viewing conditions are right, you see this big fuzzy glow that goes way up high, maybe 30 or 40 degrees yeah. above the horizon, perpendicular to the horizon. And, and it's this fuzzy glow. It's a zodiacal light. But one thing to add to this, I think, which is kind of interesting about being able to look into the black void, is that we can't do that when the sun is out here on Earth. And it's not because the sun is so bright. It's because this atmosphere, atmosphere. Yeah. right? The light comes through the atmosphere and refracts. It and scatters. we see blue. It scatters. Yeah. We see blue. It scatters. So what we see is we see the blue color because yeah. the way the light gets bent was it only the, the no, low scattered. The, scattered, but it's the wavelength of the light yeah, that penetrates. Yeah, it's over lambda to the four. Right, huh? and that's the blue that's light. Really so the blue light yeah. is what, the low wavelength or the high wavelength? Low wavelength. Okay, so only the wave, oh, low wavelength. Yeah, the, the short wavelengths get scattered. Get scattered, and that's why oh, we see blue. More than the long wavelength. Right. When you looked up at the sky, could you actually see the stars and the solar corona in spite of the glare? We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the sonar corolla what, uh, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. Years later, though, Michael Collins would remember seeing the elusive stars and wrote about them in Expeditions to the Moon. It seems his memory improved the older he got. Mr. Armstrong, I do realize that when you were on the moon, you had very little time for gazing upwards. But could you tell us something about what the sky actually looks like from the moon, the sun, the earth, the stars, if any, and so on? The sky is uh, a deep black uh, when viewed from the moon, as it is when viewed from uh, cislunar space, the space between the earth and the moon. The, uh, the Earth is the only visible object other than the Sun that can be seen, although there have been some reports of seeing planets. I myself did not see planets from the surface, but I suspect they might uh, be visible. You don't see stars in the daytime on Earth, not because they're not there, but because the atmosphere is aglow with scattered light from the Sun. If you take away the atmosphere, the Sun will still be there, but the sky goes dark. That's what the folks get when they go to the edge of the atmosphere, and they're calling that the edge of space. But when you get to the edge of the atmosphere, the atmosphere is no longer between you and the rest of the universe. And the stars reveal themselves just as they would at night. Since the moon has no atmosphere, then a daytime picture, if you're there in the daytime of the moon, you see a full night, night sky of stars, mm -hmm. even with the sun in the sky as well. But when you get to the edge of the atmosphere, the stars reveal themselves just as they would at night. If you're there in the daytime of the moon, you see a full night night sky of stars, mm -hmm. even with the sun in the sky as well. The sky is uh, 
a deep black uh, when viewed from the moon as it is when viewed from uh, cislunar space, the space between the Earth and the moon. The, uh, the Earth is the only visible object other than the sun that can be seen. Since the moon has no atmosphere, then a daytime picture, if you're there in the daytime of the moon, you see a full night, night sky of stars, mm -hmm. even with the sun in the sky as well. We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. So as you can see the stars. Oh yeah, it, yeah. You know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah, the stars. Yeah. It's, it's not this a black cool void. Thing. I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of little polka dots. There's all the there's all the stars there, and the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. Yeah, you know, actually, on my very first mission, we went up, and and when you're when you're in space and you're looking into deep space and you're on the sun side of the orbit, uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight, so you can't see any stars, just like here on Earth. But then when you look out into deep space away from the sun, it's the darkest black you can imagine. So as you can see the stars. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah, the stars. Yeah. The cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. And when you're when you're in space and you're looking into deep space and you're on the sun side of the orbit, uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight, so you can't see any stars, just like here on Earth. There's all the there's all the stars there, and the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. The they're brighter, but they're different. Now, a lot of things different about it. One, you don't have the atmospheric distortion, so they don't twinkle, right? So you see lots of points, and you see lots of points, and that literally millions of them. And uh, I live in Colorado, and you get up in a clear night in Colorado, up in the mountains where there's no light, and you can see all these stars. Well, multiply that by a thousand. That's what it's like in space. And then when you're outside doing a spacewalk, and you, you have that one or two opportunities where you can let your eyes adjust, you can start to notice that some of the stars have colors we don't see here on the ground. And we could not see stars. The sky, of course, was, uh, was black, but it uh, had sort of a velvet sheen to it. The biggest visual surprise was just how black the sky was. <laughs> you have a brilliant sun, brighter than any sun you normally would see even here in New Mexico. Uh, you have uh, these, uh, these extraordinarily high mountains. We were in a valley deeper than the Grand Canyon. But then you have this black sky, a sky blacker than black, as the old Vit Viticon expression used to be. Just the inherent beauty of it, the velvet bottomless bucket of the universe in like just hanging there in a vast sea of darkness and the most frightening darkness that you could ever imagine. I've often tried to explain the difference between darkness when you turn out the lights and it's dark in here or blackness. Blackness is the endlessness of it all. It's hard to comprehend. When you get up on a clear night in Colorado, up in the mountains where there's no light and you can see all these stars, well multiply that by a thousand. That's what it's like in space. And we could not see stars. I was just a systems engineer on a well-functioning spacecraft coming home. And so, sure, I had work to do, but not nearly as pressing as before. <clears throat> and we were oriented such that we were rotating to keep thermal balance on the spacecraft and oriented in such a way that every two minutes, the Earth, the Moon, the Sun, and a 360-degree panorama of the heavens appeared in the cabin window. <clears throat> and that, that was awesome. It was an overwhelming experience. And we have to realize that in space, without the intervening atmosphere, <clears throat> the heavens are 10 times as bright, stars 10 times as numerous, uh, because there's no uh, atmosphere to block, block the light. And we have to realize that in space, without the intervening atmosphere, <clears throat> the heavens are ten times as bright, stars ten times as numerous, uh, because there's no uh, atmosphere to block, block the light. 